Bless the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Woo. All right, we're going to take a little sidestep to the tropics, if I can get this thing to work. Uh, hang on. Will you bring the sunshine and heat, too? Excuse me for a moment here. All right.
Good morning. This is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and that is love. The Advent wreath is a circle with no beginning and no end. It is a symbol of endless love and faithfulness. Out of darkness, light shines, pointing us in the hope to the one who came to overcome the darkness of this world and to be our light in the world to come. Three weeks ago, we lit the hope candle and remembered those who first spoke the promise of the coming of the Christ child. Two weeks ago, we lit the faith candle, a symbol of the preparation being made to receive the cradle and receive and cradle the Christ child. Last week, we lit the joy candle, remembering the first in a long line of people who joyfully shared the good news of the Savior's birth. The fourth candle on the Advent wreath is called the love candle. It reminds us of the hope fulfilled in the first coming of our Savior and of our continuing hope as we anticipate his coming again. The scripture is John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have ever eternal life. Tomorrow is Christmas, and on Christmas Day, go ahead and light it. Come on, Gary. <laughs> Tomorrow is Christmas. So I have put Way to go, this Gary. In, oh. in your bulletin to light a candle on Christmas, but I will read this. The Advent season ends. We wait no longer. The great event for which we waited has happened. God promised a promise of a Redeemer is fulfilled. Christ Jesus is born. We light the Christ candle with the praise to our God who brings joy to the world. <laughs> She'll read for you. Let Terry read it. Do you want to read the scripture in the prayer? Okay, sure. Why not? Read what? I'm a sub, I guess. Okay. From the New Testament, Titus 2, 11, 11 verse, and verse 14. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly, worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for, for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify himself, for himself, a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Prayer. Hallelujah. Wonderful counselor, might, counselor, mighty God. Amen. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, we rejoice that you, so wonderful, so mighty, so everlasting, and so princely, entered time in the weakness of, home, of human flesh in a lowly stable in Bethlehem as the son of a peasant couple. O child of Bethlehem, your birth gives us great joy. Make, make our joy complete so that we, like you, spend our lives looking to the in interests of others. By the power of your Holy Spirit, instill in us your attitude of humble service. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. And I might add, please pray for Bethlehem. There's a, there's a lot going on there right now. We, we've been there and loved that place. And yeah. it just it just breaks our hearts to see Bethlehem in such turmoil. Yep. Thank you, God, for taking care of us. Amen. 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 Anything else going on that I missed here? Anybody else want to say anything? <laughs> Honey, do you want to go here? Go ahead. Do you want to do the message? Oh, no. It's <laughs> okay, I remember. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, all this music up here. Wow. 
Merry Christmas, everyone. Great day, huh? Uh, I'm going to put this over here somewhere, I guess. It's, um, I don't know, did you guys, or was it just me? I called my wife in this morning. I was in my office, uh, had my prayer time and prep time, uh, getting ready for today. And uh, in the middle of my prayer time, I looked out my, my one window and I thought uh, something was on fire. Did anybody see the red, red blaze? I thought, wow. I, I, I was just, I, I was taken by it because I thought of the power of the Holy Spirit and uh, the cleansing purification of the fire of the Holy Spirit. And I looked at it and I thought, is this a miracle or is it just me or am I getting old or what, what, what's going on here? But it was absolutely stunningly beautiful this morning. And, uh, and I just thought, okay, Lord, your anointing is there. Your blessing is there. And we're going to celebrate Christmas and uh, just enjoy absolutely every minute of it. Amen. I, I mean, so this morning, um, I wanted to, uh, you can get out your outlines if you have a minute there. It's uh, the titles, Thank You, Thank You, Thank You. And it's all the things that we have to thank God for. And I thought, you know, obviously Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. Jesus Christ is why we are here. And um, without Jesus Christ, there's no Christmas. There's absolutely nothing going on at all. It's, there's nothing there. And so I thought about God's gifts to us. Now, I've talked about this for over 50 years. So um, hopefully there's nothing new. Hopefully there's nothing new under the sun. I enjoy and I don't mind it repeating myself over and over and over and over. Peter said the same thing. He says, I want to put you in remembrance of what I said yesterday. And then I want to keep reminding you and reminding you. So then you'll apply it to your lives. So today, I uh, just thanking Lord for everything. The gifts that he has given you and I, the gifts that he has displayed in our lives. And so that's what we're going to look at uh, this morning for a few minutes. And again, I'm so happy to have those of you here. We really need to pray for a lot of folks in our church that aren't feeling well. And it's a kind of a weird uh, thing because, uh, as you know, you know, Terry went to the ER and we got it in there and asked everybody to pray for us. And she didn't have COVID, uh, didn't have the flu. But Sunday and Monday of last week and Tuesday all through Wednesday in the week, kind of tired and all these kind of different things, just not feeling right. I said, honey, how are you doing? Well, I'm okay, but I'm just not right. So with all of these things going on, we have a lot to be grateful for in spite of all of it. Amen. Amen. She's fine now. Good. Good. Gets better looking every day. Amen. That's true too, honey. <laughs> That's true too. All right. Well, let's pray, and uh, I'm not going to take too much of your time today, but I want to share with you the gifts that you know that God has given us, but I'm going to remind you of them anyway. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for our time of worship, our time of praise, our time of prayer. We are grateful, Father, that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, and we're going to look at that today to save us and give us eternal life. Father, we're so grateful and thankful as we celebrate Christmas, what it really, truly means to each and every one of us. Besides just presents, it's the gifts that you have given us. And so we celebrate that today, and Holy Spirit, I ask you to be our teacher, be our guide. Illuminate the scriptures. May they come out of the pages of our notes and the Bibles and penetrate our very spirit and soul. So I thank you for this time together. I ask your blessing on it in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. So Roman numeral number one, as we begin our little study this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of eternal life. And again, it's Jerry mentioned it here, John 3, 16. And it's something that we need to quote to ourselves each and every day. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. 
Think about that just for a minute, eternal life. Um, first of all, God gives us these wonderful gifts. He gives us the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ. Gives us the gift of forgiveness of our sins. And gives us the gift of eternal life. Now think about that just for a minute. As we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate actually every single solitary day. We thank God every day for bringing Jesus Christ to planet Earth. And I don't know about you, but it, when, when I read this, for God so loved the world, the world. What is the population of the world? Does anybody know? Eight How much? Eight billion. Eight billion. Jesus Christ came to planet Earth to save eight billion people. Amen. Think about that just for a minute. And, and in the process of that, guess what? We're included. You and I, in the eight billion, we have a choice to receive him as our Lord and Savior, don't we? We have a choice to do this. We have a choice, Revelation 3.20, you and I have a choice to open up our heart and invite him in. He came to planet Earth to change and transform us, and we just say, Jesus, come on into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Forgive me. Purify me. I want you to be my Lord to have total rule and reign in my life, as well as my Savior. And I thank you for it. I, I, I thank you for that, what you've given to me. And I think about eternal life. Well, when I think about that, it's, it's, it's really hard to think of that. I, I don't know about you. I mean, if you think about eternal life, I can ask this, what does it mean to you when you think about eternal life? You know, I, I think, wow. I mean, I'm getting older and older and older and older, and yet beyond this, there's eternity. In John 14, Jesus says, hey, I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, there's many, many rooms. His mansions, rooms galore. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when it's all done, I'm going to call you to be with me for eternity. Can you grasp any of that? Good luck. Right? But the word declares it, I believe it. Giving us eternal life. Be you reunited with the ones we love. People have gone before us. They're there waiting. They're having a great time. Now think about this. We have eternity, eternal life, no more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more heartaches, gone, no more disappointments. Everything is perfect. Everything is wonderful. So when we think about eternal life, I want, whoa, that sounds great to me. I don't know. And I saw that red glow this morning and I thought, wow. As I just looked outside and I saw the beauty of that, it's just the beauty of looking out and I thought, what is heavenly, heavenly places going to look like? What is glory going to look like? Right? You know, for we have Christ within what? The hope of what? Glory. Wow, what does that look like? God says, I'm going to give that gift to you. I'm going to give it all to you. What a blessing, huh? Roman numeral number two. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem but wait for the gift my Father promised. Now notice that. Wait for the gift my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked, Lord, you're at this time, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Are you going to restore everything? And he said, 
It's not for you to know the times or dates. Now, that's pretty important, isn't it? We don't know God's perfect timing. You know, I, I, you do the same thing. I pray for people's healing all the time. I pray for supernatural signs, wonders, and miracles. You know, I, I wait for people that can't walk to walk, can't get out of bed to get out of bed, that have all these physical and mental problems to be supernaturally healed. I, I know you pray for them too. I, I, I pray for the supernatural. And I want to see it. I'm a very patient guy. <laughs> Real patient. But I got to admit, when I pray, I, want, I would love to see, bang, instantaneous results. You know, when Jesus spoke to somebody, they got up. Well, I like that same power when I pray for everybody in this church that is really going through difficulties. As I pray for them to see them miraculously healed. So I look at this, though, and I don't know the date, the time. I don't know God's timing all the time. If you do, please let me know. Give me a phone call. Don't text me because I don't do text. You can email me. But if you got it, because it says here, you don't know the time or the date the Father has set by his own authority. That goes for everything. That goes for everything. But we still have to be consistent, don't we? We still have to pray and believe, don't we? We have to pray and never give up, don't we? Stay strong, stay firm, all the time. I don't understand God's timetable. A lot of things I don't get, but that doesn't mean I stop praying, stop believing, stop walking. We keep going and going and going. Amen? Notice this. Verse 8, but you will receive power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. Power. I want you to grab hold of that. You will receive power. What do you personally need power for today? What do you need it for? Think about this just for a minute. Am I going to need some power tomorrow? Well, I looked at this, and number one, the gift that is given to you and I is to empower us to live a life and a lifestyle that is pleasing to God. I don't know about you, but I need power to do that. I need power to do what God wants me to do. I need power to live the life and the lifestyle God wants me to live. I need his power in me, operating on a 24-hour basis all the time. And number two, and this gift gives us the power to live a balanced life and to be a witness to others to see and to hear us. Isn't that good? Power. Do any of you work out? You work out? Well, sort of. There's only a couple of you that work out? How many ski? How many do anything? Get out of bed. Do you do anything at all? <laughs> okay, fine. You get out of bed. You need some power, right? I need power just to get to my car. <laughs> I mean, we think about power. I think about it absolutely every single day. I need the power of the Holy Spirit indwelled in me just to exist, just to operate, just to function. Are you with me? We need his power. And I thought, wow. And that gift also, the Holy Spirit opens up the door for all the spiritual gifts, all the motivational gifts, everything to operate in our life for his praise and his glory, not ours. And I thought, wow. And also in John, uh, I think John 14, the Holy Spirit also is our comforter. Comes alongside of us. And he'll comfort you in whatever you happen to be going through. Not only will he empower you, but he'll come alongside of you and comfort you. Give you a supernatural peace, which transcends all human understanding 
in the process of that, he'll guard your heart and your mind too. I think that's pretty cool. It's a gift. He gives it to us. Not only Christmas, it's, it's a gift. What a blessing, huh? What a blessing. Roman numeral number three. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of living waters. The gift of living waters. John 4.10. Jesus answered her and said, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Now notice again, it's a gift. A gift of living water. When you and I run the race of life, we need living water. You know the importance of water. I mean, you all have, it's three, what is it, three-fourths of our body is composed of water. Besides oxygen, water is the second most important thing for our body, for functioning, uh, transporting vitamins and minerals and nutrients and uh, disposing of, of waste and all these other things. And the thing that shuts everything down in our body is dehydration. There's, there's drinks, uh, I happen to take one. I, I work out and I come home and I take a hydration drink and I make sure that I'm hydrating all the time. Because if you don't, guess what? You get dizzy, you lose your, yeah, your brain goes wacko and, and you, you know, you, you lose your balance, you lose everything. And so God says, I don't want you to go through that. In fact, I'm gonna give you living waters. You're gonna stay hydrated as you run the race of life hydrated with living water. Isn't that good? Living waters. I thought, wow, how important is that, that we stay hydrated through the mercy of God as he fills you and I full of living water constantly. And number four, thank you, Lord, for the gift of a blessed life, a blessed life. Ecclesiastes 34, 25, I will make a covenant of peace with them and rid the land of wild beasts so that they may live in the desert and sleep in the forest in safety. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that something? That's pretty cool, isn't it? I will make a covenant of peace with them, rid the land of what? Wild beasts so that they may live in the desert and sleep in the forest in safety. I will bless them and place a surrounding the hill or surrounding the hill. I will send down showers in season and there will be showers of blessings. Isn't that cool? There's a song, Showers of Blessings. The trees of the field will yield their fruit and the ground will yield its crops. The people will be secure in the land. Notice what we get out of this. What a covenant of peace peace. And I'll tell you something that's so, well, Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding. Again, I'm repeating it. It's going to do what? Guard my heart, guard my mind, and fill it with the peace of God. In the midst of what's going on throughout the entire world, the entire world, like Terry has mentioned, praying for Bethlehem, Jerusalem, um, I'll tell you, uh, Isaac and Ishmael, they, they had a, a, a time, didn't they? Two brothers, and they've caused a lot of problems. Got to pray for the salvation of all of them, don't we? They get saved. All of them get saved. But there's a covenant of peace for you and I. And a shower, <laughs> this is great, showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. In your time of need, God will bless you. He'll bless you. And I thought about this. He'll shower us with love, joy, peace. I know you don't know the, or need this, but patience, kindness and goodness, mercy, long-suffering. And he'll shower you with the blessing of self-control, self-discipline. Just pour those blessings on you. Isn't that great? Yeah. And then we're going to be safe, safe all the time from all these wild beasts and all these other weird things that are going on. God says, I want you to have a fruitful and a blessed life. I want you to be blessed. God says, I want you to be happy. I want you to be joyful. 
Because the joy of the Lord is your strength, Nehemiah 8.10. Right? It's your strength. And lastly, number five. In return, what can we give to God? All the blessings that he's given you and I, what conceivably can I give back to God? What gifts can I give back to God the Father? What are they? Well, number one, we can give him our life and our love. We can give him our life and our love. Hand it over to him. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. My soul, my mind, that captivates my thoughts, doesn't it? Captivating my mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws and the prophets hang on these two commandments, everything. So what, I, what, what can I do with, in my life to please God? Father, I just want to love you more. I, Father, I, I, I want to love you with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. And I want to love my neighbor as myself, as difficult as that might be. But I want love to abound. Love to abound, to overflow, continue, never endingly, right? We have to have that love. And then again, it, it, it's deep. I mean, I'm telling you, it's, it's deep to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, my very depths of my soul, and he gets my mind as well. Wow. That means he gets my thought process. I turn it all over to him. Everything I think about. Number two, he gets our praise and worship. Praise God all day long. Hebrews 13, 15, though Jesus therefore let us continue to offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise the fruit of the lips that confess his name. Coming out, coming out, thanking him, praising him, worshiping him, blessing him all day long. I mean, all day long. Number three is our time. Give God your time. Give God your time. I don't know about you, but I, I personally like, well, I, I have it most all day, but like most of you, I, I like to start my day with the Lord. Um, I don't like to be bothered. I don't like anything to happen. I want to sit in my little lazy boy and then look outside, and I just want to thank God. I just start thanking him. Thanks for this cup of coffee. Thanks for my chair. Thanks for my house. Thank you for my beautiful wife. Thank you for my kids, my grandkids. Thank you I get to see him play basketball out in the backyard. Boy, thank you, Lord. Wow, wow, wow. I want to give you my time my energy, and my thanks, all right? That means time to read your word. Well, somebody's, I'm so busy. No, you're not. No, you're not. If you think you're busy, you're crazy. You always have time for God. Always. I would start and end each day with God as my focus, period. If, that's, I think, what we need to do. And out throughout the entire day, throughout the entire day, all right? Number four is our talent. Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. With the measure you use, it will be as measured to you. So God gets our talents, whatever they are. I mean, you guys have lots and lots of talents and God says, give it to me and then I'll bless you, but give your talents to other people. Let it just kind of run out from you to other people, whatever that might be, whatever that might be. And number five, our treasure, our treasure. Proverbs 3, 9, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Now, 
our treasure. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Um, one of the things that I think is real important is, uh, and you probably all know this, um, I never pay any attention. I don't know. My wife knows about the I have no idea about the money. In fact, she has to tell me what I get paid because I don't know. <laughs> Honey, you make this much. I said, what? Yeah, you've got this because I don't know. And you notice we don't have people coming up here and taking an offering and then you throw things in a, a bucket. Why don't we do that? I'll tell you why. It's none of our business. It's none of your business who gives what. It's none of my business. I don't want some, oh, okay. Oh, oh, they forgot to put a tithe in. Check them. None of my business. It's none of the church's business. You know why? It's between you and God. It's your treasure, your blessing. You give it as he tells you to give it. Now, I do know we got a bucket or something in the back. That's it. Your treasure is given to you, the blessings by God Almighty. It's up to you to give back to him. And better than nobody sees you even dropping stuff in that bucket. Are you with me? It's all between you and God. He blesses you abundantly. So I'm going to repeat this. What can we give God? Our life and our love. We can give him our praise and worship. We can give him our time, our talent, and our treasure. Isn't that good news? And lastly, God's gift is available to everyone. Everybody. Everybody. 2 Corinthians 9, 15. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift of what? Eternal life. Eternal life. It's given to all of us. And again, it's so simple. Getting saved is pretty easy. Saying stay, <laughs> staying saved, is, that's another story. Getting there is pretty easy, but staying there is another, another issue. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you, thank you, thank you for John 3.16. Father, thank you that you so loved the world that you gave your one and only Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, Father, thank you for the wonderful gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. And I just thank you for the time we have together right now. And I ask you just to continue to bless us, and I ask you that blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Joe? I just want to say before I start, as, um, as you guys are reading the Christmas story in the next couple of days, I encourage you to start to, to read from that first chapter of Matthew, starting in verse 18. Really look at Joseph and look at what he must have been going through during, during, this, during, the, during that time. simple 
His face and hands so fair, and when he cries, the sun just seems to disappear. But when he laughs, it shines again. How could it be? Father, show.
And now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine down upon you and be gracious unto you. May the eyes of the Lord continuously watch over you. May he grant you his love, his joy, his peace, his power, his freedom, and his multiple blessings of healing flow from the tip of your head to the base of your toes. Father, bless each one here as only you can. And I ask, Father, that you answer their prayers today Amen. as they cry out and call out to you. Amen. I just ask, Father, for a miracle that it happens quickly. Yes. And I ask your blessing on everybody here again. In the mighty and powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, 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 and amen. God bless you, church, and have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas, and I'll see you before New Year's. Amen.